Hey, now that we have learned about how this dApp development flow works, let's start building a smart contract. You can directly open the Remix editor in your favorite browser and here in the files section create a new file. Let's name it as a bank.sol. Now in this tutorial we will try to build the bank of Ethereum. Working of this smart contract will be as follows. Firstly, user will be able to deposit their ethos into our bank just like any other traditional banks we deposit our money. Second. Users can check their balance of the account and lastly, user can withdraw funds from their account. It's as simple as that. Ok, so let's start writing our smart contract. First we should declare license for smart contract. It's not compulsory but if you don't, the compiler will show a warning and it's a good practice to declare a license. After this, the solidity compiler version. We need to declare a range so that any compiler version between this will compile the smart contract smoothly without throwing any errors. And here comes the main contract body. Let's give it a name. We will name it bank. You can name it anything you like. So now let's declare the essential functions in the smart contract. The first one will be of course a constructor. A constructor is basically a function that runs only once, which is at the time of deploying the smart contract. Whatever code is written in the constructor will be executed only once while deploying the smart contract and never after. The next thing is modifier. It's a special function included in the solidity that is used along with the other functions to modify them. In most of the smart contracts, Modifier is primarily used to restrict the functionality of the functions to the owner of the smart contract. We will see how it's done as we go. Now comes the deposit function which is actually allowing users to deposit their ethereum in our banking smart contract. This will be a payable function since we are paying some ethers to the smart contract. And it will have a public visibility so that any user can access it from outside the smart contract and deposit their ethos. Then the withdraw function to withdraw funds. This will take one argument so that the user can withdraw a preferable amount from his account. Which should be less than or equal to the available balance in the user's account of course. This will also be a public since user should be able to access it from outside the smart contract and also payable as there is a transaction involving the transfer of value from smart contract to the user's wallet. We will get back to these functions once we complete all the function definitions. Now you must be wondering why did the deposit function doesn't have any arguments in order for the user to deposit a preferable amount like we did in the withdraw function. Well you can do that but it's not necessary since the amount that we want to store in the bank will be same value that we will be sending to the smart contract from our wallet. This will be much more clearer once we complete the smart contract and test it. So next, the get balance function to return the balance of particular user in the bank. It will return an integer since we will also be storing the balance in integer format. After that, get contract balance function to get the total balance of our smart contract or you can say the bank. We will modify this function using the only owner modifier that we have created earlier. And now to withdraw the funds, this will also be a modifier with only owner. We will come to this function later. Here let's declare the address variable to store the owner's address of the smart contract or you can say the bank. And then one mapping user balances which will store the balance of each user. For the constructor, let's assign the msg.sender that is the contract deployer as the owner of the smart contract. And in the modifier, let's specify the required condition. So this will compare the current user's address which is interacting with the smart contract to the owner's address. 
Now in the deposit function, let's add one required condition stating that the user should deposit at least 10 V in our bank. It's not required, but this will ensure that the user is not depositing zero ethers in the bank. You can add your custom minimum and maximum limits. And then we will update the balance information in the mapping. Here, msg.sender represents the current user which is interacting with the smart contract and msg.value will be the amount that he is depositing in the smart contract. And now in the withdraw function, we will first check if the amount user trying to withdraw is less than the amount available in user's bank account. If not, then this will throw an error. If S, then let's update the user balance information in the mapping and transfer the amount from smart contract to the user's wallet. Now in the get balance, we will just return the available balance of the user. Similarly, get contract balance is for getting the total contract balance. But since we have added the required condition using modifier, this function can only be accessed by the owner of smart contract. So only owner will be able to see the total amount of Ethereum available in the bank. Or else you can just go to Etherscan and get the smart contract balance there. But we have added this functionality just to tell you the use case of modifiers. And now the withdraw funds function will give the power to the owner of this smart contract to withdraw any amount from the smart contract and cannot be accessed by anyone else. Okay, so now that we have deployed a complete banking smart contract, let's compile our smart contract. Here is the compiler section in Remix ID. You can check the compiler version here and make sure the correct contract is selected. Once it's done, just click on the compile button. You can copy this ABI from smart contract here. We will need this in later parts of our tutorial when we will be connecting the smart contract to the user interface. It says we have one warning, but let's ignore this for the time being and move on to the deploying part. So we can directly go to the deploy section in Remix ID and then select environment as JavaScript VM. You will find some accounts with 100 test ethers each for testing of the smart contracts. Make sure you have selected the proper smart contract and hit the deploy button. You can track your progress in the logs. It has plenty of details. At the left corner here, you will get the interface for interacting with the smart contract functions. And here is the smart contract address that's been deployed. Let's maximize it and see what we have got here. As you can see, we have got all the public visible functions to interact with. Deposit, withdraw, withdraw funds, get balance, etc. Now let's test this smart contract by interacting with these functions that we have just created. Let's get the current user's account balance. As it says, it's zero. And the total contract balance is also zero. And also the owner's address of this smart contract. Everything is good now. Let's select a different account and try to deposit some Ethereum in our bank account. So from here, we can actually provide the value to the smart contract from the account that we have selected above. Let's deposit two Ethers. And now let's check the user's account balance and there it is. The function is actually returning the balance in V that is the lowest unit of Ethereum and accounted as the 10 power of 18th decimal of 1 Ethereum. So you can just count the zeros and see if they are actually counts 18 or in the smart contract itself we can just return the value in Ether by dividing the value by 10 to the power of 18. Now when I try to get the contract balance it throws an exception in the logs that you are not the owner of this smart contract. And that's right. Remember we have actually applied a modifier to this function in which there is a require condition which compares the current selected account with the owner's address and that's why it's throwing an exception. Now let's deposit some ethers again from some different account at this time. Say we deposit one ether and get the balance. It's correct. 
Now let's select the owner's address and get the total contract balance. It should now return 3 ethers, right? That's because we have deposited 2 ethers from this account and then 1 ether from this account. Okay, so now let's try to withdraw some funds from the bank account to our wallet. Let's withdraw 0.5 ethers from the bank. So in V, it will actually count as 5 into 10 to the power of 17. Let's put 17 zeros on 5 again. This can be adjusted in the smart contract itself. If you want, you can try it in your own version of the bank. Now that we have successfully withdrawn 0.5 ethers, we should be remaining with 0.5 ethers. And it's correct. As you can see, it's actually deposited in the user's account or we say wallet provided by remix id for testing now let's try to withdraw funds from the smart contract using the only owner function and see what we get as you can see in the logs we have got an error saying that you are not the owner of this smart contract because the currently selected account is not the owner's address so this is how you can build a complete banking smart contract with Solidity and test it on Remix IDE. There are more than one ways you can deploy this smart contract. Say you can use Truffle, Hardhat or just the terminal itself or from Node.js whichever is you are comfortable with. So if you want to learn how to deploy smart contracts using Truffle or any of the methods mentioned above. You can click on the link given in the description or directly watch the tutorials available on Dapp World. In the next tutorial, we will build a plain JavaScript web application and connect it to the smart contract using Web3 and Metamask Wallet.